guys and girls, thanks for clicking on the link. My name's Jace from Kinetic Images Australia and today we're going to have a chat about the Eaton Fuller 18 speed Road Ranger gearbox. We're going to cover things for about footwork, uh, range changing, shifting, splitting, skip shifting, etc. So uh, please enjoy, we're going to take you for a spin in a couple of Western Stars and a couple of Kenworths. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. Before we get into the details of the shift pattern, I wanted to let you know about the position of the gear stick and the fact that it has two sections. It has an easy section here, which is the majority of your shifting, one, two, three, four, but it also has this area over here where you have to push against the spring. You might be able to hear it there. There's a spring there, and then that allows you to go to reverse and low. But the majority of your shifting, day in, day out, is going to be in this H. Here, 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 and here. And this spring over here is there to design so when you're driving along and everything's cool and you go to go into gear, you can feel that you're over there and you're ready to go into that part of the H pattern. So, now we're going to go for a drive. going to demonstrate here how we don't use every gear. Now, it's great having an 18 speed, but very rarely do we use all gears. I'm not using the splitter, I'm just using a normal change like you would in a car. And um, the reason being is because I, the horsepower I've got and then I've light on a load, I haven't got a heavy load on, um, I don't need to split, I don't need to use all the gears. Now I'm doing 60 k's an hour in a 60 k zone, I'm in my top gear, I have a split to go, so I've got another split gear to go to get me onto highway speeds and to keep the revs down to where I need them, which is around 1600, 1700. Using the clutch is another thing. We don't use it a lot. We only use it when we get to go. There are two parts to a clutch travel and two things that a clutch does. First of all, it disengages the gearbox from the engine so you can put it into gear. And when you push your foot hard down all the way to the floor, it's got a brake on the clutch and stops the clutch from spinning so you can put it into gear because on trucks, even when you're in neutral, the gears are spinning. They're, they're spinning because of the thickness of the oil, the inertia of the steel, because a clutch gearbox is so much bigger and a clutch flywheel is so much bigger than a car.
So we're going down a hill now. I've got a little bit of brake applied. We've got traffic. I'm going to go down a gear, a full gear, not a split. So rev and down. Using the clutch. It's always a good idea to use the clutch when you're not so familiar with the truck. I haven't been in this truck for about six months uh, and every truck is different. So we're losing road speed, we're losing revs, we're going to get some more revs and we're going to give it a little kick in the guts and then there we go. So that's downshifting. Um, I'll show you some footage of my footwork in the Kenworth. I'm in a Western Star at the moment. Uh, now we're going to come down the gears. We're on a hill, we're losing speed. Now that's without a clutch, sorry, I should do that again. So we're losing speed, we're losing speed. And it's just that little rev you do as you go through neutral with the gear stick. Losing speed, losing speed, losing speed. Range change, a rev, clutch movement, and away you go. It's quite simple. Losing speed, losing speed, losing speed, you need another gear, double clutch, rev, and away you go. We're going to go down a hill here, and I'm going to pretend that I'm going down a steep grade, and so I'm going to hold my foot on the brake. Now heel and toe is very important, especially when you're braking and you want to slow down. So make your selection, down, heel and toe, and away you go, you can go again. This way, using the clutch as Eaton Fuller recommends is pretty important because if you get it wrong, you've got some give in the clutch. There's a give between the gearbox and the engine, and um, you know, you need that give. If you get it wrong, um, you know, there's some play that's going to be taken up by the gear, by the clutch, and you're not going to shock the system too much. I want to demonstrate to you also the importance of um, revs and road speed and how easy it is to change a gearbox. Now, when you're actually changing gears, once you've got the gears and the road and the revs match, you don't use your clutch. So it's just a case of matching it and throwing it. Now, sometimes you can't change the gears, but if you do your revs right, you know, one finger, one finger. It doesn't take much to do at all. If you've got your revs and road speed match, it just slots in. Um, you know, again, one finger, easy. But if you can't, if you, have, if you haven't matched your revs right, you haven't taken the load off the gearbox from the accelerator, you won't get it out of gear. But you take your foot off the accelerator and hold, and it just pops out. Explain to you um, double clutching, heel and toe, splitting, and skip shifting. Uh, we've covered all that. I guess some of the um, the finer details uh, is going to be um, the sweet spot. If you don't want to use the clutch, the sweet spot is when I was showing you before about hitting the gear stick or trying to push it out of gear or into gear and it wouldn't go because there's load on the gearbox when you've got your foot on the accelerator um, the engine is driving the wheels and as soon as you take your foot off the accelerator the wheels are driving the engine and it's called overrun and that's when you're able to use engine braking when I showed you with my one finger, I said, you know, you hold your hand on the lever and then put a little bit of pressure on it pulling back, take your foot off the accelerator and you'll feel it pop out of gear because the sweet spot is between the engine driving the wheels with your foot on the accelerator and when you take your foot off the accelerator, there's a moment where 
the engine's not driving the wheels and the wheels are not driving the engine. And that's your sweet spot. When you use the clutch, that's your sweet spot because you've disconnected the engine from the gearbox, you've disconnected the load from the engine driving the gearbox and um, that's when you're able to pull it out of gear uh, quite easily. Um, so it's all about timing, it's all about you know how quickly you move the gear stick. When you're doing a shift, you move the gear stick quite quickly. When you're changing a whole gear, you do it like that, slowly, and that's your foot on the clutch, off the clutch, on the clutch. Uh, sorry. Is the right amount of time for the revs to drop because you've taken your foot off the accelerator, and um, you know that's why you're able to just do your, the nice, easy changes. When you're skip shifting, you'll notice several times when we're skipping, there's a delay. I pull it out of gear, wait, and then go in. Often when you're changing and you find that you've misjudged it, so you've, may, you may, you've pulled it out of gear and it's grinding to go into the next gear, whether it be an upshift or a downshift, um, it's probably because you've either waited too long or you're too quick trying to change and what it'll do is it'll grind in your hand, you'll feel the gears grinding together and you know there's, there's a bit of a joke in the, in the uh, industry that there's no point in having teeth unless you clean them. I'm sure when the manufacturers built these gearboxes they built them with you know a certain amount of uh, human error involved uh, and that's grinding the gears a little bit. As long as you don't try and force it into gear, you're pushing harder, I mean if it's, if it's grinding it's wrong. You know, you, 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 your gears aren't meshing together, and so you've either got to wait a little bit longer and try it, or tr go for a different gear because you're now trying to find a gear. So obviously you're not driving the truck uh, with the engine, so it's slowing down. Your revs are slowing down, um, and you only need you only when you're um, upshifting or downshifting a whole gear, you're only really asking for about 400 revs to either drop when you downshift or putting your foot on the accelerator and climbing 400-ish RPM to go into the, into the next gear when you're upshifting.